You're welcome to The Gavel. I'm Linda Akibi. It was a week of screenings of nominees for different positions by federal lawmakers. The Senate screened the nominee for the position of EFCC Chairman Abdul Rashid Bawa, as well as the newly appointed service chiefs. The National Assembly also confirms the appointments of immediate past service chiefs for the positions of non-career ambassadors. There has been criticism of President Buhari's appointment of the former service chiefs as non-career ambassadors, and two petitions were sent to the Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs, which screened them. But these petitions and concerns did not deter the Senate from confirming the former service chiefs as non-career ambassadors. The newly appointed EFCC chairman, Abdul Rashid Bawa, telling senators his plans to reform the commission if confirmed by them to lead. The last time the Senate screened a nominee for the position of EFCC chairman was in March 2017. That was the now embattled EFCC chairman, Ibrahim Magu, whom the Senate rejected twice because of a report by the Department of State Services which declared that the nominee lacked integrity to lead the country's anti-corruption agency. Mr. Magu occupied the position in acting capacity for an unprecedented five years. But it appears that these senators are favorably disposed to President Buhari's latest nominee, Abdul Rashid Bawa, for the position of EFCC chairman. I am so impressed and I'm in awe in this very awesome presentation by Mr. Bawa. Regardless of their approval of the nominee, lawmakers take him up on several issues relating to transparency surrounding recovery of assets and monies from proceeds of financial crime. Mr. Nominee, there have been issues about the EFCC recoveries in terms of fund and properties where amount recovered is different from amount remitted. Looking at your CV, and given your eloquent presentation so far, and given the fact that you have been in FCC for the last 16 years, there is this notion, wrong or right, that EFCC is used as a tool to which hunt some people for political and other reasons. If confirmed by this Senate, we are going to be more transparent, we are going to be more accountable. We have, of course, the lingering problem or issues bordering on management of assets, etc., etc. We are going to embrace technology to enable us to keep our records properly so that, as at when do, Nigerians are action question, it's just a matter of pressing a button. The way we operate in the EFCC, distinguished senators, is that at the end of every investigation, files are being sent to legal department to vet and see whether or not the investigation warrants any prosecution in court, whether the report has adduced in it points to prove an offense beyond reasonable doubt. Senators also question him on some allegations which have since gone viral. There is allegation in, in the press and particularly in the social media that the seized and forfeited assets at Port Harcourt were not properly disposed of. But I, as zonal head of the EFCC, never for once sold a single asset in Port Harcourt. I never did. The then secretary of the commission, together with three directors and other staff from the headquarters, flew into Port Harcourt and disposed of the trucks and other assets in them that were forfeited to the federal government of Nigeria. Assuming we even did that, the EFCC could have been the first to punish me. They could have investigated me. They could have even prosecuted me. The last two EFCC chairmen faced corruption allegations in office, and the newly appointed one will be confronted with a tough task of not only strengthening the commission to efficiently tackle corruption, but also avoiding the pitfalls that plagued his predecessors.
We just watched the report of the screening of a nominee for the position of EFCC chairman, Mr. Abdul Rashid Bawa. We had a chat with a federal lawmaker and the former chairman of the Senate Committee on Anti-Corruption to examine some issues the new EFCC chairman must address on resumption. We expect Mr. Bauer to come back and reorganize the management and staff of EFCC. Over time, I, I have I worked there as the chairman of the uh, Senate Committee on Anti-Corruption and Financial Crimes. You know, I worked and I saw, because I was close overseeing, I saw a lot of things done there. You know, most of the staff, so many, so many people, so many staff suffered. Some resigned. Some sought uh, transfers of service. Some people were, were punished. You know, one word or the other. You see a family that is resident here with the ch uh, children and all that. All of a sudden, you send that person to Bruno. You send the other person in all that. Made, made, made a mess of the whole place. I expect that uh, he will come. All those staff that uh, ran away because of the poor management of that place, he should return them. The core staff of the EFCC. These are core staff that were trained. You know, so uh, return them. That is one. Second is, is and their welfare. Because most of them were put on the half salary. Some of them were uh, denied promotion over time. Is a common thing over there. So we want him to come back and humanize EFCC. Make sure that you have good welfare package for these people that are doing so much, you know, exposing themselves to uh, harm, or, uh, harm doing their job. So we want him to do that. The other, the other issue is he wants him to reposition this and then the headship of this establishment of uh, EFCC and all their branches. You bring the core staff that have gone through these trainings and put them in places. What you have is that you have more core AFCC staff uh, will be there. You bring a police officer and post him there. So, and, and the police helps these people, whether the people that are there are more educated or uh, 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 older in service and all that. It doesn't matter. Once you bring a police officer, the person is in charge of that place. He has to make sure that these round pegs are put in the round holes. He makes sure that all those people that are put in places these people have their wings. This is a, a time for them to test their wings, whether they can fly. Because they, for over time, they have been kept under and kept without complaints, without doing anything for the country. So this is the time we expect him to return this core staff. And uh, we expect him you know, to uh, ensure that, uh, that uh, the, the attitude, the, the, this attitude that, uh, which was uh, 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 synonymous with EFCC in the past of uh, rushing to media before issues are, are, are this in, before uh, you uh, you have done with your uh, with investigation should not be ready the day. We know that the press will always want to follow up issues, especially when they go to court. But we want him also to look in his in the in his uh, public relations department and bring infuse a new you know, new lease of life into that, uh, uh, that uh, place. So that they, uh, they, they have to look at issues, information that come out from them. You know, that uh, 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 we know that some, the uh, pressmen can be inquisitive okay. in uh, uh, trying to you know, dig out their information. But they have to study and make sure that their press releases will be a thing that will match what they are doing, not before or after. You know, so they have to sit and uh, get, uh, get there. That's the public image of EFCC. You know, he has to work on that seriously to ensure that he restores the image. We know that today, you go and look at what is happening at ICPC. They, anytime they're coming out, you know they're coming out with information. You know, that's why. Go to look at DSS. Anytime they're coming with information, they are, you know they're coming. We want EFCC to, under his watch, to have that image. We have that uh, respectability. We have that uh, uh, the confidence the public will have in them that the, this is the information is, that is coming. This is the way it should be, and all that. Some of these, uh, these are some of the issues uh, we want him to uh, done. The other issues that we want is going to be with the uh, uh, with the executive in terms of introducing a bill. Then there has been calls for you know for the amendment of the EFCC Act. Some feel that the EFCC Act is not strong enough to bring about the required you know, zest for the commission in fighting to fight corruption? There are a lot of things to be amended in that uh, 
act. You know, in terms, the one is the overall one thinking that the EFCC is an extension of police office. We have to amend it, you know, to state that you can pick anybody who is qualified in the country outside the people who are in the EFCC, the training ground there. If you don't have, yes, you can pick any of this, but if you have, but I don't see the reason why you will not have with the kind of training there. So we have to amend, the, the, that act has to be amended. Uh, the other issue is the funding. You see, it is a very, very important thing there, that if you ask our people say in Igbo language that you don't ask a person to go and catch it, you know, the shrew, and you won't give the water to, and soap to wash and clean. You know, you can't ask if it's to do the job, and then you don't fund it properly. You know, we have to amend the act that a certain um, a percentage of the money, the uh, recoveries they have done, certain percentage has to go to them. You know, and so, as they, as they, so that they will not be coming every time cash in hand, cap in hand begging for funds. So you will want the, that certain percentage. We amend the act. It was what I proposed in 8th Assembly, you know, to amend the act to get them proper funding. Have a, if it's 2%, if it's 3% or so, or graduate it, that every five, uh, two years or three, so, so things can be done for them. You know, you, so you do that uh, so, so that they, they can do that. And then amend the constitution to put them on first line charge. You know, they should. You see, ICPC, EFCC should be on first line charge. You know, because their job is very, very uh, critical. Now, speaking of more funding for the EFCC, what other measures can the National Assembly put in place to ensure that the EFCC is independent, particularly from interference from the executive? If you don't fund them properly, it means they will be at your uh, 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 back and call. That's not good for, for EFCC. So you will need to make sure that you have proper funding of EFCC. You know, NFIU, you know, is doing a critical job. It has to be on first line charge. ICPC, first line charge. These are critical agencies of government that uh, they have to work. So you make sure that these agencies are in the first line charge of the, of the, of, of, uh, in the constitution uh, uh, that we're about to amend. If you do that, you, give, you strengthen them. The other issue is, the, yes, the appointment can come from the executive, that is, prerogative of Mr. Uh, the Mr. President or the presidency. But, you see, we are going to amend the Constitution, to amend the EFCC, also, to include that, just like we confirmed him, before you remove uh, the chairman there, you have to come back to the Senate and explain to us why you are sacking the person. You know, so that he, if he comes to office, he will be properly positioned, knowing fully well that his funding is done properly for him. His uh, security of tenor is secured. He's not going to be there tomorrow. You whisk him away, you know, and all that. So the person can now do his job. Some of these, these are some of the things you have to do to put them in place. There's a school of thought that there is a need for the establishment of special courts to try corruption cases in the country. Do you think that this is a good measure to address corruption in Nigeria? Would you be backing this, 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 um, this call for special courts? This uh, special courts uh, issue, is that, uh, many people have been uh, talking about it. I feel that we can, have a special, we can have a special track, not specifically just going out there to start uh, enacting an act of the National Assembly to do that. The, was, what happened in the uh, past was that the EFCC, under the, uh, the former man who was there, was not ready to work with the Attorney General's office in the first place. You see, and even the act, the Establishment Act of EFCC, has said that Attorney General of the Federation, he has over supervisory uh, powers over it. So in that case, you have seen an, an agency of government that was not ready to listen to what even the law the National Assembly passed. In, uh, in doing his duties. So I expect, I don't expect this uh, wrangling that uh, precipitated such a situation to rear up his head uh, this time around. I don't. You're welcome back to the gavel. Now let's take a look at some major issues which dominated discussions in the National Assembly during the week. The chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee presented the report on the screening of the former service chiefs to lawmakers during plenary session on Tuesday, February 23rd. 
President Buhari's nomination of the former service chiefs as non-career ambassadors has raised eyebrows in the country and even among senators. The committee received petitions against their nomination as non-career ambassadors of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, but the, uh, the, the petitions were dismissed by the committee. But Senate Minority Leader Ayin Naya Baribi sought an explanation for the dismissal of the petition against the confirmation of the former service chiefs. This Senate took a resolution that these men should be removed as heads of the security apparatus in Nigeria. And not just once, but three times we took that decision here. And for the same people to be brought back to us, to be confirmed for another appointment, that the Senate is under obligation itself to look at the resolution that they had taken before. If they are nominated for something that is different, I think our resolution asking for their removal as service chiefs does not cross over to that nomination. So my feeling is, let's advise the executive to use the experiences of these retired service chiefs and these nominees, if they are eventually confirmed as ambassadors, to be posted to countries where they can add significant values. The Senate president quickly ended the debate and the Senate confirmed the ambassador's designates. Those in favor say aye, those against say nay, the ayes are it. As the immediate past service chiefs were confirmed as ambassadors, their replacements were screened before the security-related committees in the Senate. The major part of the exercise was done behind closed doors. Meanwhile, their fates have been decided in the House of Representatives as the lower chamber confirmed their appointments. We question them on various topics, ranging from ethics and integrity, professional skill and experience, Nigeria's war on terror and insurgency and banditry, funding of the military, strategic security knowledge and vision, the role of the military in politics, interagency cooperation, personal troops, health and welfare of the armed forces, their leadership style and temperament, strategic communication skill, decisiveness, external military relationship, military hardware and upgrades, military-civilian relationship. Mr. Chairman, we found them worthy, and we have the following recommendation, which is submitted before you, Mr. Chairman. The Senate has resolved to investigate allegations of abuse of funds for the Safe Schools Initiative introduced by the Good Love Jonathan administration in 2014. The upper chamber also urged the federal government to collaborate with the various states and local governments to urgently design and implement a workable arrangement to deploy well-armed security teams around all schools in the country. These resolutions of the upper chamber followed its consideration of a motion sponsored by Senator Stephen Odey who is seeking the restoration of a safe school initiative. That the safe school initiative was launched to promote security and safety of schools, pupils, students, teachers, as well as facilities in 2014. The Senate is further aware that the safe school initiative was formulated to design and implement the best of global standards in the educational sector in Nigeria through the employment of qualified teachers, provision of li library and laboratory equipment, conducive environment for teaching and learning, as well as provision of habitable classrooms and hostels. The Senate is concerned that the unfortunate increase in the insecurity crisis in the country with the advanced target as schools in diverse locations, especially the regrettable kidnap of the Chibok, and Dapchi school girls in Bornu State and Yobe State, respectively, the Kangara school boys in Kasina State, and most recently, the kidnap of students of Government Science College, Kagara, Niger State, have exposed the unimaginable decadence and dilapidation in the schools in Nigeria. 
Senate Minority yes. Leader Ayin Naya Baribe, in his contribution, urged the Senate no, to look into the allegation of abuse of funds meant for the execution of a Safe Schools no. Initiative. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has urged security agencies to expedite the rescue of the Kagara schoolboys. The House is worried that the longer it takes, the more difficult it will be to rescue them. The matter was raised as a motion of urgent public importance by Representative Uyime Idem. Sudden that their doctors released images of their location and one of them was holding a rocket propelled grenade, a shoulder fired missile weapon that launches rocket equipped with an explosive warhead which only federal government could grant the license. Adopted persons could also be seen sitting on the floor and covered in dust. Note that the recent happenings, particularly in Niger State, is horrible and the government must move swiftly to curtail this menace, else we will soon have a nation of perpetual anarchy. The House resolved to condemn in totality the attack and adoption of students and staff of government science secondary school, Kagara, Niger State, which occurred on February 17, 2021. Two, mandate all service chiefs, the Inspector General of Police and other security agencies to intensify efforts for the rescue of the abductees. The Senate Joint Committees on Banking, Insurance and other financial institutions, ICT and cybercrime, as well as capital markets, organized a hearing on the opportunities and threats of cryptocurrencies on the nation's economy and security. The committee chairman on banking, insurance and other financial institutions explains the need for this interactive session. This joint committee is on a fact-finding mission. It has no preemptive recommendations or stand regarding the entire matter except after thoroughly analyzing the submission of all stakeholders. We shall look at the case of those engaged in cryptocurrency transactions and their contention that is in line with global financial trend and best practices. We shall also look at the position of the central bank that cryptocurrency transaction is a high risk endeavor and it is a convenient avenue for money laundering to support terrorism and insurgency. The CBN governor insisted on the ban on accounts engaged in cryptocurrency transactions Despite the public outcry, he makes it clear the bank is not in a popularity contest. We know that cryptos or bitcoins have been used to facilitate scam, which we all popularly call 419 transactions. They have been known to facilitate money laundering. They have been known to be um, an avenue through which kidnappers receive ransom and they have been known to be instruments that are used to finance terrorism. Our business is not a popularity context. Our business is to protect the uninformed and ensure that those who seek protection in a regulated environment receive those, those protections. Regulators, law enforcement and intelligence units of the country who were also present at the hearing hailed the decision of a central bank as a step towards securing Nigeria's financial institutions and fighting cybercrimes. In 2018, a number of um, globally rated institutions were hacked and taken over by some rascals and they all demanded payment in cryptocurrencies until uh, those websites will be released. They use it to sponsor violence in Nigeria. So if you like, call it terrorism. If you like, call it kidnapping. If you like, call it whatever it is. We, we never did a complete crime analysis and concluded it without picking a crypto account. Now this is where we call it a day on this week's edition of The Gavel. If you have any views on any of the issues discussed, please email us on thegavel at channelstv.com. Thank you for staying with us and see you again next week.